Poor thing, been out of the water for five whole years. I'm sorry. Five years ago, I made the submarine. Launched it in the water, worked great. Then life happened. Come along for the rebuild and then let's get this submarine back in the water and let's see what it can do. Welcome to a place where design meets fun, where crazy ideas are the norm and failure is just an exciting adventure. Where the fun had and the memories made are the measures of success. Welcome to Ascend RC. To lay the groundwork of where I started this rebuild of my submarine, I had all of the pressure vessel, the control fins, the nose and tail cones were already done. So all I had to do was put the motor back on, a new motor shaft, and the prop, internal structure, servos, the connections, wiring harness, and a flight controller. If you haven't seen kind of the basics for how I made this submarine in the first place, I have another video which I will link in the description where I just kind of talk about the basics of what I did for the design and how I made it, that kind of thing. To start, I waterproofed some of the electronics. This was something that I wanted to do originally and never got around to it. So this time we decided to waterproof and I used corrosion X on the receiver and the flight controller and I used a liquid electrical tape on the ESC. The parts for the internal frame I already had drawn up in SolidWorks from when I originally made the submarine. However, I needed to add a spot for the flight controller to the center frame section. So I did a quick modification in SolidWorks with those parts. I then took those parts and put them into my CAM software and created cut files to cut out on my CNC out of thin Baltic birch plywood. After they were cut out, I was able to glue them together to create the structure that I needed and install the flight controller into the new slot that I created and test fit it into the fuselage of the submarine. After cutting out all the other parts to the internal frame, I assembled each frame section together and then glued the aft frame into the rearmost tube section and the forward frame into the front tube section. The main purpose of the internal frame is to hold the servos and allow access to the control linkages that would otherwise be hard to reach if they were inside each tube section. Each servo is easily glued into place with a dab of hot glue and then slid into the slot in the internal structure. Control push rods are then added between the servo arms and the control surfaces and then adjusted to the proper length. In order to seal the prop shaft and the tail cone, I installed some sealed ball bearings into holes that I drilled out in the tail cone and I also used some RTV silicon to help seal the ball bearings and hold them in place. The prop shaft was then installed onto the motor with an adapter and the whole thing inserted into the tail cone with a little bit of silicon to help seal between the tail cone and the motor mount plate. Two screws were used to then hold it into place I fit a cotter pin through a small hole in the prop shaft to give a place for the notch in the prop to fit onto to give a good connection between the prop and the prop shaft. Then a tail piece fits onto the prop shaft with a set screw to hold everything into place. Alright, so I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, the control system that I've got set up for the submarine now. I am actually using a KK mini. This is a really old board. I feel like this is a good use for it because it's not going to need the really high quick refresh rate that the modern race quads, acro quads needs. I'm running KK Mini with Open Arrow 2 on it. I won't go over the programming for it unless somebody really wants me to. If you want to use a more modern flight controller, I'm sure we could do it pretty easily in beta flight. Really, it's just a matter of going in, doing custom mixes between all your channels. So what I've got is I've got six channel receiver. I'm actually running throttle straight to my ESC, so that is not going through the control board. So I'm only taking five channels over to the flight controller. So I'm taking elevator, aileron, rudder, auxiliary one and two, five inputs 
on the KK board. So you take your inputs and you just do custom mixes to the outputs. I've got a total of six servos here. You have to have a BEC to power the servo side of the board. It will not power the servos through what powers the, the KK board. One is not used, two I'm using with my BEC, then I've got three and four. Those are my, what I'm gonna call my canards, they're up front. So what I have mixed on there is I have elevator and aileron mixed, because I want it to be able to pitch up and down with elevator like a canard would, a flyable canard, and then I want it to go alternating for aileron mix. Five and six I've got onto my rudders, and again, that is then mixed with rudder and aileron. Whenever I do aileron, everything's going to do aileron. My seven and eight channels are kind of what you traditionally think of as elevators on an airplane. They're elevons, if you will, elevator and aileron. So this is all working out well, and I can show you exactly what it does. So with elevator, the canards pitch upward to lift the nose, and the elevons in the back drop to sink the tail. So that would give you an upward pitching motion. And the exact opposite for down, and then rudder works the same as well. Left rudder, right rudder, and then ailerons. Everything turns. So this should give us good control. I took my auxiliary and I mixed the elevators to give me a 50% mix. When I flick it, it doesn't do what your elevator would do, but it actually takes the canards, pushes them down, takes the elevons, pushes them down. So that should take the whole, whole thing and drop it kind of flat. Help us to actually dive is, is the thought. So once that's down, I still have control of it. So then the last thing I did was set up a stability mode. So first mode is nothing is on. It's just straight pass through other than the mixing. And the mixing is kind of the main reason I did the KK board. If I flip my switch down though, now I have auto level and stability mode mixed in. Basically, you can see does your normal stability type stuff and we may have to play with the PIDs on that, I'm not sure. And it also does self-level. So you can see there that the elevons are kicked way up to try to bring the nose up again. Kick down to push the nose down. If I roll it, you can see it tries to correct it, which, is, which should be nice. Hopefully we can dive this, flick it into this auto level mode, and it will kind of hold the depth, if you will. I am happy with the results of it, and it just needs a little bit of tweaking once we actually get it in the water. For this specific thing, ask me questions. I'll do my best to answer them. If you want to use a KK board, if you got some of these old ones laying around, well, this might be a good application to still use it. The main thing I'm using it for is that ability to mix all those channels um, that goes way beyond this old radio's ability, and then even being able to do that, you know, all dive mode when everything kicks down to help you submerge um, it, that'd be really hard to do with even even some of your more modern radios. You can definitely do it, but, but then you can't get the penetration through the water, so you can't actually use it to control a submarine. Now let's talk about the water cooling system. I am water cooling the motor and the ESC, and I bring water into the submarine through the nose cone, as you see here. With the GoPro nose on, I will use this port and a forward bent tube to bring the water in. The water flows from whichever forward inlet we use to this Y, which then splits it and takes it to the ESC or the motor. Here we see the motor cooling lines, the inlet and the return. The water has two exit ports on either side of the middle section, one for the motor, one for the ESC. <laughs> Yay, final assembly time. A little bit of silicon between the tail cone and the motor section pushed together creates a good seal. Wipe off the excess, a little bit of silicon in the screw hole. I'm using four screws around the outside to hold each section and this works really well and creates a nice tight seal, yet still somewhat accessible by just removing the four screws. And here we have a finished tail section and tail cone. I now tidy up all of the wires and make sure everything is secure. Here I put the servo wires through some sheathing as well as the three motor wires just to keep everything nice and compact and clean. Hey, I now have a helper. I fish everything through the rear of the two middle sections, attach the cooling lines. <laughs> He's really excited as you can see. He does love this stuff though. We apply silicon to the interface and push everything together. And then I get him to help actually put the screws in. Nice to have some help turning the wrench for once. There you go, buddy. Hey, good job, Isaiah. Let's finish this up, move to the next section.
Because the receiver antenna is so long, I elected to wind it around a tube. While this does reduce the effective range, having it small and compact was worth that sacrifice. This is the way I did it before and the range seemed to be just fine. After connecting the motor wires to the ESC and the rear servos to the flight controller, I power everything up just to make sure that everything is working good so far. I now connect the cooling lines tidy everything up and set this aside to work on the four two sections and get these assembled so we can put the two halves together. I feed the water line and the battery cable forward and under the front structure. I make the servo connections and test everything to make sure we're still moving and working properly. Then we can assemble everything together, apply our sealer, our screws, and we're done. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!